We now have 52 minutes of body camera video allowing us to piece together some of the last moments that Gabby was alive. But it didn't take that entire clip to notice a number of red flags. Gabby's words, her demeanor. Of course, right now, it's hindsight's 2020, but much of her body language now sparking an important discussion around domestic violence. Ruth Glenn is the CEO and president of the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and she joins us tonight. Ruth, I appreciate your time, and I think that, as I said, it's easy to look at what we saw with Gabby now, knowing what happened a week later, and it all becomes very clear, but much more difficult in the, in the moment. So I wanna play a few of these clips for you and, and then get your response on the back sure. end. Uh, we've got body cam video where Gabby is explaining to police why Brian is frustrated in her words with her. It is a phrase that she uses several times. Let's listen. He got really frustrated with me and he locked me out of the car and told me to go take a breather, but I didn't want to take a breather. He definitely gets frustrated with me a lot because I have a lot of anxiety. All right, Ruth, so what does that video tell you about Gabby and Brian's relationship at that point? It, immediately, you recognize that he is the one that's in control of this relationship. Um, her terms um, frustrated, um, and I get excited. I think she said that at some point in the video as well. Um, really um, speaks to us as what we would normally see when somebody is being victimized and by somebody who claims to care about them um, by using control and power and really enforcing, reinforcing um, that she's the problem, he is not. Yeah, and in this traffic stop, after a lot of deliberation, the Moab police decide that Gabby is the primary aggressor. They explain to Gabby that they have to separate them by law. Let's listen to this clip. I don't, I don't want to be separated. I'm... You can have anxiety? Yeah, yeah. No, we're a team, please. There's no us? What is it? No, like, we're a team, please. He's going to give me so much anxiety. Can we just have, like, a, a driving ticket? Okay. I'll pay any driving ticket, a parking ticket, anything. Hey, Gabby? Gabby? Try to calm down. It's not happening. I can't happen. feel over and I can't. I couldn't handle that. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, Ruth, it just is so heartbreaking to listen to, to her struggle. Why would a victim in this case or in any other want to stay with their abuser, not be separated? I, I think the first thing that should come to mind is she is uh, aware of what the known is, right? She's not aware of what the unknown is. There's also a great fear about what will happen on the other side of this interaction. Will he be angry at me because I didn't say enough to protect him? Um, where, where will I go when all of this is said and done? And, and how do we uh, move forward from this? So there's a lot of unknowns in this instance um, for her. And really, I can tell a lot of distress stress and fear about what's what could happen. Wow. Uh, I want to jump now to, to one final clip, uh, Ruth, and this is Moab police discussing how they would like to proceed at this point after they have witnessed everything that has happened and they've talked to both Gabby and Brian. So again, here Moab police discussing how to proceed. Take a listen. So at this point, you're the victim of a domestic assault. Uh, you can go, go to jail? You can't because we don't have a charge for you. Now tomorrow, if, if you... I'm not going to pursue anything. I'm not going to say I love her. It's just a little squabble. I'm sorry that I had to get so public. All right, so in that clip, uh, Ruth, Moab police were telling Brian he hasn't done anything wrong. He's not going to be charged. That was a different clip. In hindsight, there is a statute in Utah that requires no contact after a domestic incident meant to protect the victims of abuse. It backfired on Gabby, though, so help us understand how yes. this can happen, how we can learn. I, I think what we can learn by understanding what some of those red flags are, I think the first thing is how calm he is. It's a classic um, control uh, dynamic and tactic um, when there's that kind of event going on by someone who is potentially perpetrating domestic violence. I think that what I would have encouraged uh, from law enforcement, particularly at that point, was to really even do a further assessment to really determine uh, why I, I still am mystified why they 
uh, uh, named her the primary aggressor, mm -hmm. um, but doing more of an assessment about who really is the aggressor. I also felt as though there was a great urgency to get this thing behind them, and uh, that could have that seems to have also prevented what could have been a better assessment of what was going on. Yeah. Ruth, finally, here's the clip from Moab police discussing how to proceed. And in this moment, you hear them discussing, have we done everything right? Listen. How far do you want to go with this? Like, you know why the domestic assault code is there. It's there to, to protect people, especially the reason why they don't give us discretion on these things is because too many times women who are at risk want to go back to their abuser. They just wanted him to stop and they don't want to have to be separated. They don't want him charged. They don't want him to go to jail. And then they end up getting worse and worse. Uh, treatment and then they end up getting killed. Mm -hmm. In no way, shape, or form that I can perceive does what happened here, a little slap fight between fiancés who love each other and want to be together, can I perceive that this is going to digress into the situation where he's going to be a battered man? Right. But then again, I don't have a crystal ball. And the truth is, Ruth, none of us have a crystal ball. Moab police yeah. say they're going to investigate this, but they also said the officers followed protocol. What more can we all be doing? I think we can all be having conversations about uh, what domestic violence looks like. I think that there's a stereotype about domestic violence, to put it quite simply, which is, of course, um, a woman is hysterical, a man is uh, very calm, cool, and collected. And if we don't continue to talk about what domestic violence is, which is power and control, we won't understand the dynamic that just happened there between those two and how law enforcement responded to that. A lot of lessons learned for all of us in this tragedy. Absolutely. Ruth Glenn, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.